So the PC space is at a bit of a shakeup at the moment with AMD releasing their new Zen-based processors, the Ryzen 7, 5, and not too long ago, the Ryzen 3. There are many reviews out there already and Ryzen has proven itself to be quite an impressive processor for production and productivity work while being equally as competent in gaming. So I've been using my desktop for a while now and I think that it's about time that I gave it an upgrade then. Currently I'm running an i5-3570K overclocked at 4.5GHz with a Thermaltake Water 2.0 AIO loop on it and all of that sits on an ASRock Z77 Extreme 4 with 16GB of DDR3 RAM. It's a little bit past its generation and for the work that I'm doing, it's beginning to show its age so I went out and got myself some new parts for my system. Replacing the i5-3570K, I got myself a Ryzen R7 1700X. I've decided to go for an MATX build in an attempt to move towards a more space-efficient form factor, so I'm going with an MSI Arctic Mortar B350M board. Maybe it's just the way I use my system as well, but even with 16GB of RAM, I find myself running out of RAM quite often, so my G-Scale Snipers and Crucial Ballistics RAM are getting an upgrade to a 32GB kit of G-Scale's Ripjaws V with a rated speed of 3200MHz. Since I'm going for a smaller build and my board is white, I'll be going with an MATX sized case as well, and in line with the idea of space efficiency, I chose to go with an Inwin 301 case in white with a tempered glass side panel. It's not a case that's designed for air cooling by the way, and it's quite compact and space restrictive, so if you do get one, it's only because a fully water-cooled future is on your mind. Speaking of cooling, my AIO setup for now goes unchanged, except for the little fact that I got an AM4 bracket for my Water 2.0 cooler so that it can work with my board and my Ryzen processor. Now the Water 2.0 doesn't officially have AM4 cooling support, but for the most part design-wise, it's an Acetec design, and since the Water 3.0 is the same and has an AM4 bracket, I got the bracket for that to be used with this AIO cooler. All of these together should help to keep with my targeted colour scheme of my desktop of black and white and maybe some accents of blue with white being the primary colour. Enough talk though, let's get to the actual good stuff.
So yeah, guys, I uh, I lost the uh, motherboard lottery. My MSI B350M Arctic Mota came in DOA and it would not start up at all. Not until I unplugged the 8-pin uh, CPU power cable, which was really weird because only then did it have any lights on the board. But either way, I can't obviously run the system without hooking in the 8-pin power plug. The good news is that I got myself another board to replace this. And while this goes back for RMA, at least I've got a Ryzen system in the meantime. Yeah. <sighs> so, I installed the new MSI B350M board in and I tried to get some overclocks out of it, but I only managed to hit 3.7GHz stable and my RAM would only go up to 2666MHz. At first I chalked this up to maybe having severely lost the silicon lottery, but then I tested my chip on a friend's ASRock board and I managed to get up to 4.0GHz for the CPU and 2993 for the RAM. If anything, this tells me that my MSI board is terrible at overclocking. Not only that though, but my system would shut itself off midway in Windows sometimes and I was having some performance issues in games, in particular some pretty bad stuttering. So I'm ditching the MSI board. I was really excited for this as this is my first MSI board that I am using, but in my honest opinion, it's been nothing but disappointment and trouble, sadly. With that, I'm switching to a more tried and true brand for me, ASRock. In particular, their AB350M Pro 4 motherboard. Hopefully, this goes well. This part isn't mandatory, but it's highly advised. As Ryzen is still very much a new budding platform and system, software updates are currently being pushed out that increases your machine's overclocking, features, and most importantly, overall stability. Because of that, I prepared a USB stick earlier containing the latest BIOS updates for my board, and I'm installing them. This update in particular should do well for me as it contains the Agisa 1006A microcode update that increases overclocking performance. With this firmware update, I managed to push my CPU and RAM up to 3.9GHz and 3066MHz respectively before I hit the thermal limit of what my 120mm liquid cooler could handle and the stability limit of the board. To do so, I simply set my CPU's core ratio to 39, the vCore to 1.375, turn on the XMP profiles for the RAM but tune it down to 3066, set the RAM's voltage to 1.35 and finally set the chipset voltage to 1.15. This is also a massive improvement in performance numbers than the ones that I got with the MSI B350M Arctic motor that only managed to hit 3.7GHz and 2666MHz stable. Yeah. Despite reading online that ASRock's implementation of their 9-phase power design is really just a 3 plus 3, this hasn't stopped it from reaching much better overclocking numbers than the MSI board. I think I'm done with MSI boards for a while. Once that's booted up and all is confirmed to be stable, I ran Cinebench R15 and here are some performance numbers that compares the scores on my Intel system, the 1700X before overclocking, and the 1700X with the new overclocks. It's interesting to see that while the single core performance of the 3570K at 4.5GHz matches my Ryzen 7 1700X at 3.9GHz, the multi-core performance absolutely smashes it away, which is exactly what I expected and what I was looking for. Now that that's all up and running, it's time for a little B-roll.
So yeah, this video took much longer than expected due to the reasons mentioned above. The setback of having a dead board than a Mautly 41 was a massive downer to the excitement of building a new Ryzen system. But hey, that's all sorted now. I'm really happy to be finally moving away from my 3570K and its 4 measly treads. And yes, even though its single core performance is on par with my new Ryzen chip, it gets demolished in multi-core work that I do quite a bit of, including encoding and rendering. If there's one thing I learned from this experience though, no more MSI for a while. <laughs> one more thing before this video ends. Many years ago, I went for the first ever Core i series launch in Australia, and I got myself a uh, Intel Core i7 t-shirt. Now, as you can see, the t-shirt now looks really worn out and even the Core i7 logo has fallen off. But the interesting thing is that it fell off days before I went for the Ryzen launch event here in Malaysia and I got myself a uh, Ryzen t-shirt. I find this to be strangely foreboding of the times we're living in as PC enthusiasts and the shift in preferences of many tech tubers out there, including myself from Intel to AMD. And you know, that's it. Thanks for watching this build log. If you liked it, drop me a like, give it a share, and if you didn't, drop a dislike or maybe a comment. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent, and remember, PCMR. <laughs>